I've been around a long time. And over the years, we've had many marches and very few of them have turned violent. So Australia has a very good record in term, those terms. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had the Reclaim Australia rallies and they were attacked in Melbourne uh, by the Antifa mob, the socialists. I was there for that. I saw what was happening. We had a huge cordon of police, you know, two or three deep uh, between us and Antifa. We had horse, you know, police horsemen and then Antifa was even attacking the horses, you know, and they were throwing paint bombs and other nasty bombs at us. Um, they were attacking people. There was bloodshed in the streets. But that is very unusual. And we're hoping that this yellow vest movement that we've started here in Australia will work the same way. But I can tell you this, after talking to quite a few people, especially my military friends, that we are prepared to fight if we have to, but we don't want to. Um, right. And but believe me, a lot of veterans are very upset with the way things are going. I just put a, um, an interview on um, Australian Patriot Radio with um, an ex-Vietnam veteran who is fighting hard to get parity for the Defence Forces Retirement and Death Fund. Um, right. The government is just ripping us off wherever they can. And it's the same thing throughout our, our society. We're being ripped off by the government and getting nothing in return. And it's got to stop. And it's all because the government is not really our government. We were supposed to have the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act government as defined in 1901. We don't have that. They, in 1986, they took away that using the Australia Act, which was never ratified by a referendum of the people as required by Section 128 of the Constitution. So every government since then has been unlawful. And therefore, we don't actually have to obey them because we are uh, under uh, common law, Article 61, we are lawfully bound to lawfully rebel. And that's what we're doing now. So, so we're urging people to do all sorts of things, but we can stop all this using citizens initiated referendums. Right. So what, what I'd like to ask you now, Ivan, is what are some of the benefits that will accrue from being able to have a say in our government? Um, well, I mean, the, the benefit I see to what we're talking about specifically here is that it becomes a relief valve. Um, if people are heard or if they even feel like they're heard, they're less likely to have these um, um, outcries. You know, if, if we're getting some sort of representation that we feel is appropriate, we are going to have uh, a much more balanced approach uh, in communication. If only one side is saying this is what's going to happen, an example is uh, with these uh, veterans who are not getting supported, uh, and yet large oil companies or large uh, uh, coal companies, foreign coal, coal companies, are getting massive amounts of support from the government, there's a disparity Right. There's a disparity of value of we, we individuals feel unvalued. And then we as individuals cannot seem to assist those we value. Uh, one of the uh, reasons we're talking is um, a, a gentleman we know has been uh, telling me about an initiative to help house veterans and create a, create a, a more simple and equitable uh, way of supporting them. And part of my initiative, the health initiative, is also to support them in tracking their and getting better health solutions for them. The issue What's is... What's the name of that organization? Um, that's, uh, uh, Joe, we don't have a title for it yet, but that's uh, what Joe Summer and I originally started talking about. Um, okay, because there are a few organizations like that around. Right. There's and what, health and, exactly. You know, um, so what we wanted to really do was have a methodology, because when we built the D-Health network stack, we built a set of tools that actually help project management. So we were able to invite, uh, and if you're organized, you look good to banks and to money people so that we can then get funding for these different projects. So what we've been slowly doing is building a series of projects that each individual group can vote on. They can then push those ideas forward towards people who want to support it from a financial aspect and get these things done without having to have government. But at the same time, if government came tapping on our shoulders saying, what are you doing and how are you doing it? They could see that we're using a democratic process in order to do it. And the voting is key to that. Being able to tally those votes, follow up those conversations and say this group of people ended up going in that way and got support from these people because of this dialogue. And for me, that's, that's the key to this voting platform. For Rick and for CIR, we need to be able to um, uh, have a, a much clearer voice in the world. And that's why we're talking about this new alternative to Facebook. Um, we, this this referendum-based um, uh, society 
we could make our own little micro society out of all the individuals. We already do it. You know, we're all Facebookers. We're all Googlers. Why aren't we all Rickers when we come to voting? Why don't we just put our two cents in and then get see it get tallied? Because we put our two cents in Amazon and we get our products. We see it. We put our two cents into Google and they're paying for lots of things. And we're putting way more than two cents worth of our value into Facebook. Um, and they're, they're able to push their agendas. If we put together a system that when we put our time and effort into it, this RIC voting platform and RIC uh, CIR society um, that we're trying to develop online, with that dialogue, with that momentum, we can become a, a, a much fairer, less edited, much more clear voice of the globe. Now, when I say the globe, I don't mean like, you know, the global elite trying to take over the world, that kind of conversation. I'm saying that of the people, even though I can't vote in your country, my opinion can help you get where you need to go. The brotherhood of man, basically. Exactly. We, we have this, you know, uh, if we understand uh, common courtesy, common law, being able to travel freely, being able to uh, support each other, uh, being able to have commerce uh, internationally, our history has created uh, a series of arbitrary fences between people that are used in order to um, uh, keep the power amongst a small group. And because of these arbitrary in invisible fences, we call them money systems or, or international boundaries or taxation or whatever, those systems may not have been put in place because of this, but they have ended up controlling a lot of the population. So what we're hoping with the RIC CIR voting platform to do is see the voice of the world come together and start to choose better. So, uh, you know, one of the, the, one of the common misconceptions is that uh, people on the right or more conservatives are not that interested in alternative energy. And this to me is ridiculous because I have very many friends who are very conservative and they are very, yeah. right. They're, they don't want to, uh, you know, uh, pull things out of the earth unneeded. We don't want to uh, cause all sorts of pollution and, and lose water tables and things like that. Um, it, it's just that they have been trained, a lot of the, that's, those systems have been trained that that's where you make the world move forward. You need money to make the world move forward. If you. Well, you know, this brings up an interesting point that we discussed before. Um, where you mentioned um, new ways, alternative ways of doing business with each other and even generating wealth for everybody. Correct. Can you explain that in more detail? So the, it, it stems from exactly what we're talking about. Because people are uh, brainwashed, programmed, or have historically only had a few choices around how to make money, um, these, these concepts of making money always tend to go straight to capitalism. You know, people don't realize that there's still money exchange in Russia in a fully communist society, you know, uh, well, depends on how, how you believe uh, Russia per se is, is functioning now. But if in a theoretically communist society uh, or socialist uh, pin, underpinned society, there is still money. We still need a value transfer. And it's the value transfer that's the key because I may not need to give you a gold bar in order for you to fix my broken arm. I, I may need to give you um, the ability to feed your family or feel comfortable or have heat. And that does not require the gold bar in between. And so what we're talking about is creating ways of transferring value between persons and arbitrarily giving away some value to persons that have some limitations. They may not be able to work at this time. They may have certain problems that they need to overcome and how do we create an equitable social construct that allows people to function as members of society because we have many many valuable members of society that that either physically or mentally cannot contribute because they've been pushed to the edge they've been marginalized in so many different ways and it's because all of the dollars and gold bars are going only going in one direction. They're going to a very specific select few. And, and to say that we're controlled is, is to know more than I'm willing to say. But the, the trend is that fewer people are in control of more money. And so 
if we say that we are just going to take away um, the money problem and we're just going to use Bitcoin uh, instead, or we're deciding that we're no longer going to base our economy on oil, but how we can convert solar energy into electrical power, if we do those changes, that really scares a lot of people. A lot of people at what's considered the monetary top now. So, if well, there's, we, there's no need to do that, but what we need that's to exactly do now the is point. set up a more equitable system. That's exactly it. So this is not a war. We're not. This is not a war on the global elite. Mm. This is give us choices. Right. We come right back mm. to Rick and and CIR. Give us choices so that we can say within our small communities we do want a solar farm. We do want a, a wind farm or a solar wind farm. We want. Uh, equitable health uh, options that people in France have. Like, I would love to have some of the medicines that I'm allowed to have in Canada here, but I can't. I can't. I, I'm not somebody who's into, um, uh, you know, alternative medicines per se, but I don't believe that we have studied them well enough. I think that there's, there's a lot of things that um, have developed from nature and have been turned into medicine that have been ignored now because it is not as monetarily profitable to use those natural frameworks and study them, right? So well, one all of, of the these big problems we have with government. Well, so the, the one problem of the problems. Yeah, one of the problems we have with government is total control, and we want to get that control back into the hands of the people. The government is supposed to govern and be a servant of the people, but right. it's, they've turned it around. The political parties have turned it around, and we are now. They're vassals. They're, we are the servants of the government. That is wrong, and it must change. But now, give you an example. People who are terminally ill, for instance, why aren't they given access to experimental drugs that, they, that may help to cure them? Um, why are they denied this? Instead, people are dying needlessly. So, you know, we, we really need to get back control over, over our government and make them accountable to the people. And that's what CIR and RIC is all about. Right. And, and um, it, it's, it is, in my opinion, um, the best option we have. Because right now we have, um, you know, we, sometimes I, I do this, you know, scales of justice, scales of logic versus heart, you know, things back and forth. It's not a set of scales. One does not lose for the other to win. It's, it's this, this, mm. this, uh, warlike mentality we've been brought up with that if you get food i'm losing food right and that is not that does not follow logically well there's there's enough yeah. surface area to to feed everyone there's a, if we had uh, systems in place of uh, that gave us equitable power equitable um uh, farming all these things we could feed everyone as they are the problem is is the money would not filter back to a central location that's the problem, right? So what we're hoping to do with CIR is bring these, um, you know, concepts together that, um, you know, an example of that disparity is that, you know, the, the conservative governments tend to give their money to corporations that give them the ability to uh, have better lobbyists in order to keep them in power. That's the mentality around that. Well, they've got an agenda. I understand that. They're backed by corporate uh, entities in order to keep themselves in power. But that's not to say that the other side doesn't do the same thing. They just do it in a different way. Mm. And the way that the, the perception that a, um, a, a more left thinking government is going to want more scientists to have a say, to have more um, um, logical frameworks around making choices, those are great, but they're expensive at the same time. So we need to have that balance. That's why we move from left to right, why we move from logic to, to heart. Uh, we have to have a, a center place where we can all talk 